Caden Live is the heavyweight nonlinear video editor for Linux. It's also available for Windows and is entirely free and open source. Recently, the latest version 2004 was released with tons of improvements and a lot of cool new features. And since I rely so heavily on Caden Live, I figured it's time to show off all the latest features of Caden Live 20.04. Hello, hello, I am Jay and this is DS Tech Media, covering everything tech from hardware to software, specializing in content creation on Linux and free and open source software in general. So here we are at the download section of kdenlive.org and we have four options here. The install for Windows, the standalone for Windows, the uh, PPA for Ubuntu, and the cross-distribution app image version. I have already downloaded the app image version. I don't think there's much of a difference between them. Also, I should mention that we're actually going to be checking out 2004 Dot one, which is uh, the latest point release 204 and comes with some fixes to bugs and just some general improvements overall. So I'm going to go ahead and run the app image. And the first thing that you'll notice is that they now include a cool new splash screen while it's loading. Okay, so uh, first, it's been a while since I did a Caden Live review. I think the last one I did was 1908. And in 1912, there were uh, some important things added. And the most important thing that they added was the volume mixer functionality. So now we have a master track and volume slider and LED bars for each audio track. Something that Caden Live was lacking, but Flowblade has had for quite some time. We also got uh, effects for each track. And at some point, uh, Master Effects also became available, but it also ended up being disabled and they have re-enabled it for 2004, as I understand. So the first thing to notice is there's been a slight change to the uh, color scheme. The audio track thumbnails are now green and white rather than the orange and white, which I honestly preferred, or maybe it was orange and black, but we'll let them slide on that. Here in the project bin, we've got new ways to mark and sort any types of video, image, or audio resources. You can give them ratings. You can, of, of course, always sort them with the date, or you can add descriptions to them. But now we also get this uh, tagging feature. In addition to stars, we can now mark them with these different colors, and that gives us an extra level of sorting ability. So we can do something that has five stars and blue. And now everything that we marked with yellow will appear here. And we can further narrow it down with uh, more specific markers. Also new to the project bin is the ability to replace clips. So if you have a clip and 
you want to swap it out for an alternate one, you can do that now. We also can now change the resolution of our videos, 4K or 1080p, 1 to 1 will be in its native resolution, and we can mark it down to 725, 40, 360, or 270p, and that'll make it easier on your computer for that playback. Also, it is now noticeably faster when scrubbing through so it's just lightning fast there used to be like a little bit of stiffness when dragging now it is effortless the scrubbing Another uh, seemingly minor but actually quite useful feature is now if we drag out a video in length. Uh, Dell Precision Workstation. You're going to have distortion of the voice by time with stretching or shortening of any clip. Now we can right click and go to change speed and we have our speed adjuster here but we could also reverse or do pitch compensation audio interface sound card digital to analog and i use this one so on now one. even though i've greatly adjusted the speed my uh, vocals are not constrained by the time of the video clip the master effects works just as you would probably think so we go to master effects and each effect that i add to master effects will be applied to the entire timeline so every clip track in the timeline will receive those effects Or maybe we want to do more of an animation. And here I'm just using position and zoom to sort of animate the camera panning. vignette effect to the end will give it even more of a animation feel and here we are with a little animation and some vignetting another uh, function is Multitrack view now has the ability to actually select and work on the clips in the different tracks, not just display them. But easily the most impressive new features is the motion tracking. We can now set up motion tracking for various things on screen. And I did this little demo here. You've got several different tracking algorithms. I haven't actually researched. You can choose rectangle, ellipse, or arrows you can change the color there is a blur feature you can also change 
the size of the arrow and you can change the uh, spacing of keyframes and I'm gonna go ahead and play this And then from there, we can analyze and copy that data and apply it to something like transform. So here is the uh, DS Tech Media logo. And we're going to copy the import the keyframes from the clipboard. And we can play with things like the offset, the ins and outs. We don't want to limit the keyframe number. And another awesome feature is we now have a zoom bar for keyframes so that we can actually get closer and individually select different keyframes. But here's just a little example of motion tracking. And you'll notice that it actually gets smaller as it travels away. Lots of cool possibilities with that. As far as legacy effects being fixed, they have fixed the audio waveform filter. It has to be added to the master effects to work. It doesn't seem to work on a per clip basis though. You can also uh, now set audio references and align clips to the set audio reference, which I know Flowblade has been able to do for a while now. I don't recall it being possible in Caden Live. Also, you can now save effects as groups or stacks and then you can add them to the project and of course there's all kinds of little fixes and adjustments that are really great overall it just is a hundred times better than when i first started using caden live and it was even good then there's a reason why caden live is the go-to free and open source editor uh, some of this stuff might not be necessarily available on windows uh, one such thing is the open timeline IO import export functionality and that is support for Pixar's open timeline input output interchange format allowing interoperability with Final Cut 7 XML, Final Cut Pro X XML and Adobe Premiere to name a few and they have a full support list here and Caden Live Windows, it says that it is coming soon. So that's everything. Um, I think this is a really, really solid release. Uh, lots of important little fixes and uh, additions everywhere. Most notably is the performance. The performance for this version is so much better than 1908 that it's, it's just insane. Also, I don't think I've had it crash a single time since I've been playing with this version, and I've been doing a lot of purposely complex tasks. The audio mixer is an excellent addition. The motion tracking is really cool. You can get creative with that. The ability to uh, compensate for the pitch shifting is also really important. The sorting options are excellent 
for uh, if you're doing larger projects. And I, I think the multi-effect editing is great for that too. Also the ability to zoom in and out on each uh, keyframe addition that you've done on, on your uh, effects. That's a, kind of a duh feature that everyone has probably wished they had at one point or another. Anyways, let me know what you think. Do you use Caden Live or do you think it's not worth your time? I personally love it. I also love Flowblade. Would love to hear from you in the comments section. If you like open source and Linux content or tech in general, take a moment to subscribe and like the video. Every little bit helps. I put out new content all the time. I do lots of different stuff. I do server tutorials, Raspberry Pi stuff, some gaming stuff, mostly Linux stuff. We also do a little bit of Android stuff and I put out new videos on the regular. I also specialize in graphics design, web design, and music production with Linux. So if any of that interests you, please check back. Uh, part two of my guide to audio production and recording on Linux will be coming at some point this month. I'm fairly certain. Been busy, but we're going to get it out. Once again, I'm Jay, and I thank you for watching DS Tech Media, and I will see you in the next one.